Hello iOS fans, Robin here, and I'm back with a, a quick sneaky, it's not really how to play as such, though that is how I build it, uh, but it is a, a quick look at the new Warhammer Underworld online uh, warband that dropped uh, this morning. I got up this morning to discover a new warband and had unexpectedly arrived, and I have to say I hadn't necessarily guessed who it was going to be. It was Samson's Fast Riders, another round of uh, Stormcast Eternals, which I know some of you won't be that pleased about. Uh, but I've got a soft spot for this warband. They were the first full range warband in Shadespire, and they spiced things up and made things a little bit different. And I really, really did like the models too. I think uh, the diehards were looking forward to Scritch and uh, Garrick's Reavers. I'm not sure why they haven't been uh, released now. It's possibly an economic one in that I think they're probably the most sought after, so people will definitely stump up the cash for them. Or it may have been just simple, simply that they have a lot of reactions and interactions that are perhaps tricky, so it's easier to do some of the more straightforward warbands first. Um, we've also got a beautiful uh, new uh, looking uh, console to look at. It's not massively different, but it's got a new picture. And if we click in here, uh, we've I was a little bit confused here because um, you've only got the four warbands here, but if you click on one of these pluses, uh, then you go to this panel here where you can choose all the all our existing warbands, including the Fast Riders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a look at the fighters, go through those, and I'm gonna have a little look at the cards. Now, some of you, obviously, who are regulars to Shadespire will probably know these cards, although Shadespire is, for those who play physically, has kind of forgotten, the Fast Riders are kind of forgotten, so maybe you'll have a little refresh of the cards as well. If you're brand new to the game, you've never seen the Fast Riders before, this is really for you to have a little look how they work. I was hoping to have time to play a whole stream but uh, family life being what it is, I failed. I have cleaned my fridge, however, this morning, so there is that. Okay, let's have a little look um, at uh, what's going on there. So under here, we're going to have a look at for the Fast Riders cards. There are three of them. All of the Stormcast Eternal Warbands have three fighters because they are um, tough as, really. Um, they've got the very similar profiles to um, the other Stormcast in the game, uh, Steel Hearts. Um, so they are, they're all four wounds as you can see, and they're all one block as you can see. And like the, uh, the other Stormcast, they're movement three, with the exception of old Fast Rider here, uh, because um, the wind in his sails, or his pants, um, gives him four move. Uh, so that's uh, Fast Stabs and Fast Rider. And what about their attacks? Well, the first thing you might notice about their attacks um, is that they've got two of them, which is relatively unusual in the game, and all of them have this one here, which has, has a range of three. So it's range three, three dice, one damage. So it's not a massively powerful attack. You're not going to be taking anybody out in one go with this attack, but uh, you can do that little chip damage, that ping damage, and just keep uh, more of attrition on your op opponent. Um, keep firing. You don't have to charge so often with these guys, because obviously once you've charged, you can't reactivate. So you can eat, conceivably do some ping damage and then charge him for the stronger two hammer, two damage attack with the hand axes, or you can just sit back and ping them uh, for one at a time without without making those all important charges. And of course, it does also mean if you get charged and a push back, you can still shoot. You don't have to you, you don't have to commit with a charge to get back into combat. So that's pretty powerful. There is other there is, however, one small fly in the ointment, um, and that is that their inspire condition is to end the action phase in enemy territory. So whilst in theory it looks good, like these guys are good to sit back and shoot, if you want to get inspired then you're gonna to have to uh, get into your opponent's enemy territory at the end of the action phase. So that's between, after you've had all four activations, um, and then the final end phase where you uh, score your glory uh, in between there. If you're in your if you're in the zone, if you're in your opponent's territory, uh, then you inspire. Now, do you want to inspire? I mean, generally in the game, it's always good to, the ins to inspire. I think the feeling uh, in the original tabletop meta was that fast riders didn't matter quite so much if they all inspired they all have to do um, this um, thing each so it's not like a whole warband inspire thing much like rooks is only one of them gets injured they inspire um, but so each of which whichever one of them are in the end of enemy, enemy territory um, at the end of the action phase but they will inspire whichever ones of them are um, so let's have a look at samson now samson's possibly the most interesting he stays at four move he goes up to two block they all go up to two block um, so they can become quite hard to shift although they're you know they're still as vulnerable to cleave so don't forget that the, sh the hand axe um, stays the same so it's still range three um, and one damage 
um, and you might notice that old uh, Samson here has got a different attack. He's got a Star Falcon, which is range four. So it's hard to imagine generally why you would make a shocking hand axe attack. But you've got the Star Falcon, it's three dice. And if you get a critical hit, which is not impossible on three three swords, it does happen. I mean, it's better than having two hammers. So you've got um, three swords, you've got more chance of getting a crit than you do on two hammers, even though you've got slightly more chance of getting hammers. The crits have it uh, for, the, for the swords, I think. Um, but they do one damage. But if you get a crit, they'll be doing two damage from range four, which is pretty tasty. I mean, obviously, you're going to be out there in the in your opponent's face to get to get inspired. But if you drop back, you've got a nice range of four, or you can help out your opponents, your uh, colleagues across the board, uh, which is pretty good. Um, and then he has a uh, the shocking hand axe attack. I don't think changes. It's two hammers and two damage, which is what it was um, when he was uninspired. That's right. So uh, Almeric Eagle Eye. What does he gain from inspiration? Well, he's got a two hammer, two, two hammer, two damage attack, um, and he goes up to two hammers, three damage. No extra um, things on there. So you're getting an extra damage, which is pretty good if you can find a way of boosting a, a dice on the attack roll to three hammers, three damage. Even if you just do it for once in a, in a combat, um, that's pretty pretty potent and can take out most of the uh, fighters in the game. And uh, Swift Blade. So he. Um, his attack is slightly different. It's uh, his Storm Saber is three swords and two damage off the bat. As we've talked about before, I think the, the three swords is generally considered to be better than two hammers because it's slightly more reliable. I think you've got slightly less chance overall of success, but you've got more because you're running more dice, you've got more chance of running crits, which are harder to stop. Uh, and then when he inspires, he will go up to. Um, well, it's the same. It's still three hammers and two damage, but he gets cleave. So whether you want to inspire him is going to depend on your matchup. In the current meta for Warhammer Worlds and Underworld Online, then you probably are going to want to um, inspire him because there's a lot of cleave warbands out there. Sorry, a lot of uh, block warbands out there. Magors do block. All the Stormcast do block, and the Oryx are block. So cleave is is really powerful. It, if you're playing the soon to be released, hopefully, Spike Score Swarm. Or Garrick's Reavers, then they are rolling dodgy, so they're, it's less important there to, uh, to to inspire because actually he doesn't gain much else other than cleave. Everything else is pretty much the same. So let's have a little look at the objectives for them. Um, you can actually switch up here between them. So this is all the objectives, but there's no new, as far as I'm aware, there's no new universal objectives. And if I click on this one, I'll just switch to the uh, Fast Rider only cards. So what have they got? I, they, I, this, I'm literally the first time I've looked at them in, in a number of months. Um, you score this in an end phase if your warband took an enemy leader out of action in the preceding action phase. In the current meta of Warhammer Underworld Online, that's that's quite likely. Um, you probably would be disappointed against. Uh, I mean, it's hard to do if you're playing against any of them. Actually, all the leaders are, are tough to take out at the moment in the game. But it's definitely worth thinking about. Brave but cautious. Score this in end phase if you have at least one surviving fighter and none of your fighters suffered any damage in the preceding action phase. So the, the um, Storm, Steel Hearts has a similar card to this. Um, and it's depending on how you're playing, that's scorable. So I tend to play more aggro, so I probably wouldn't take that card because I'm more likely to suffer some damage. Close with the enemy. Score this in end phase if you have three enemy fighters adjacent, to, three friendly fighters adjacent to enemy fighters. If you want to be using your bows, you're probably not going to be trying to score that one as well. Eternal Supremacy, so it's basically a clone of the Supremacy card, so it's three glory. I'm always very wary of taking Supremacy cards for three fighter warbands. If it comes out at the end of the game, you've probably got almost no chance of scoring it because you've almost certainly not got three people left. Uh, and it's still, even if you have got three people left, it's still very susceptible to things like distraction. Um, it's very difficult to um, hold three and, and keep them with just three fighters. Lightning advance, score this in face. All your surviving fighters are in enemy territory. Again, it's not massively strong. It's good late in the game. It's not so good first thing in the game, although it does synergize with the uh, inspire condition. So maybe you would think about it. You just have to be careful on your ball selection because you don't move that fast. You need to make sure you can get into your opponent's territory if you've, if you've got that card early on in the game. Um, score this in end phase, meticulous annihilation. Score this in end phase, all enemy fighters have been taken out of action. It's like a mini annihilation. You would definitely take an annihilation over this one. I don't think you'd take both. Punishing volleys, score this in end phase if you made at least three successful bolt storm pistol or overcharged bolt storm pistol attack actions. Ever storm, uh, overcharged bolt storm pistol is an upgrade which we'll see in a minute. That's tempting to take that card. You kind of feel like, well, I'm going to be able to do that. But you have they have to be successful attacks. 
uh, and that can be tricky, just depending on the matchup, but it's very, very dice dependent. Range of strikes, score this immediately if your warband has taken two or more fighters out of action in this phase. Um, also able to be scored if you draw this card after the condition was met. Well, uh, again, it's it matchup dependent. I think it's a good card against a support guard because you can ping damage them to death from afar. Um, but uh, against the Oryx, you know, it's, you don't want this first first round end of the game, quite possibly. Um, it, you might start to get better. Of course, it is the it is in the action phase, not two overall. So. Um, it's, it's tricky, but you, you tend to do most of your mopping up towards the end, so maybe. I mean, it's just, it, I, none of these cards are really, really strong. Sigma's finest score this in invades if your surviving fighters are outnumbered by surviving enemy fighters at least three to one. Well, things are going badly, you might score this, but you, you I, I mean, it's possible. Again, it's possible, but it's not strong. I think I think if you're playing the Fast Riders, you're going to be looking for cards outside of your faction-specific cards um, to put a deck together. If I do the uh, playthrough with them, perhaps I'll record putting my deck together or at least go th over the deck that I've chosen before I start to play. Um, let's have a look at the ploys then. Um, so ploys. Fearsome Roar, choose an enemy fighter adjacent to a friendly fighter, push them one hex. It's not bad, little movement card, good if you're playing for objectives or your opponent is holding them. Firm Footing, roll an extra defense dice for friendly fighters holding objectives in the next activation. Well, I guess if you are trying to do the supremacy, then that's pretty good, extra defense dice is always useful. Lightning Blow, I think most warbands have an equivalent of this, it's plus one damage in the next activation. It feels like it's really good, but it is dependent on you hitting. Um, but it could be good if you've got um, sort of a reliable... Bolt Storm Pistol, Three Swords, you know, maybe plus one damage could be good. Good on the bird. You know, if you get a critical, you're up to three damage with that. Uh, double the movement characteristics. This is Lightning Stride uh, for the first friendly fighter to make a move action. Can be good, but they can't make. Uh, they may not make a charge action, and then they cannot be activated again. So it, it has its uses. It's useful at the end of the game if you're trying to score conquest or something, and you can shoot across. There is an objective maybe coming at some point, but I don't think it's out yet, called Cover Ground, which will, this will score you immediately, which is quite good. Patient Defense, the first friendly fighter to be targeted by an attack action the next activation is plus one defense. Really handy card if you look like you're about to take a Orc Fist in the face. Rangers Advance, now this is a really good card. Choose two friendly fighters and push them one hex. You do have to watch out if you've only got one fighter left, you can't use it. It's a dead card, but uh, pushes and extra movement in this game are everything. Really useful if you want to get into other people's territory. Um, you can you can do that if you haven't quite made it. You can use two, two Rangers, to, two Fast Riders to get there. Um, which is really good. Rapid Volley, uh, another great card for them. I think this would be in most decks. You can basically um, make another attack, which again will tie, ties in, synergizes with the card about making successful bolt storm pistol attack actions. Gives you an extra chance to make a successful one. Retribution, also good because extra attacks are everything in this game. Basically, you're looking when you're trying to put your deck together, you're looking for ways to get free movement and free attacks. They're, they're the lifeblood of a good game and retribution plays off an attack action that damages a friendly fighter that fighter can uh, make an attack action that targets the attacker so as long as you're not dead which is reasonably unlikely uh, certainly early in the game because you've got four wounds and there aren't very many things that can take you out in one fell swell swoop retribution is a great card putting somebody on guard for warning cry also useful not as useful as it could be for these guys because they already roll in blocks but you know it's it's not bad and Steady Volley, the first fighter to make a bolt storm pistol, uh, can be pushed one hex before they do so, which again has its uses if you are maybe trying to get on objectives, if you are going the supremacy route, or if you want to get into your opponent's half to inspire it. It's, it has its uses. Upgrades. Um, so what have we got here? We've got some quite a few person-specific cards. So these ones are restricted to Fast Rider, the Atheric Step. Um, he can move through other fighters. I think that looks much cooler and sounds much cooler than it actually is. Covering fire uh, can support an adjacent friendly fighter, even if this fighter is not adjacent to the attacker. And that's quite useful, a bit of extra defensive support. Um, but you do have to still be adjacent to them as well. So you, that means you are look putting your um, fighters in the same area of the board. Uh, attack with cleave. Uh, flashing hand axe, two hammers, three damage. I can't quite remember. Uh, fast riders, uh, he's what two hammers, two damage. So you're getting an extra damage and cleave, um, which is uh, pretty good. It is fast rider specific. I mean, it's quite, it's it's not unhandy. Um, it's better in some matchups than others, as I've said. Although in all the current matchups, apart from Swan Guard, it's very good. Furious blow during an attack action that targets this fighter has failed. This fighter cannot be driven back and can make an attack action. It must target the attacker. 
well you know that's pretty good i mean you've got to not be hit um but it's another free attack but again it is restricted to re eagle eye now this card is a good card rolls of uh, single support for this fighter when they are targeted by an attack action um count as successes when they are adjacent to to no friendly fighters so if you're on your own um then you're basically you know you're getting support which can be vital if you're if you've got two defense dice you know, you've got a reasonable chance of running supports can be really useful just to give you a bit of extra security overstorm bolt storm pistol now this is a, a decent attack it's three hammers so you've gone up from swords to two hammers and it has cleave so that's a, i mean i think that's in most decks or well, certainly in most decks in the current meta here uh sharp eyes Fight attack actions gain cleave again. That that can be really useful. A bit matchup dependent, but again, in the current meta, uh, cleave is cleave is good. Spinning strike. I possibly wouldn't use this card. I'm never fantastic with the sort of scything attacks that take you can get to or all adjacent enemy fighters. This only does one damage, and it gets quite hard because they tend to have supports. I'm, I'm not sure I'd take that one. Swift stride plus two move. Can't really underestimate how a good um, fast movement is, especially for three fighter warbands. Get yourself into trouble or out of trouble. Um, you know, do that. Do the attacks that you want, um, particularly try to get somebody long bomb them in to get uh, inspired or something and then finally swift blades another upgrade attack swift blade i'm guessing let's have a quick look at what swift blade has so swift blade is three swords two damage and that would take him up to uh th two swords three damage so it's a kind of uh, switch around there but it does have cleave so there's some benefit to having that um, attack uh, although that actually uh, when he's inspired he gets cleave on his swords anyway but it's more damage so you'd have to think about that it depends on what you're trying to do i'm not sure it's a great card off the top of my head so that's it i will try and put a deck together for these guys i'm like i say i don't think it'll have very many of the faction specific objectives because i don't think they're that strong it'd be interesting to try and put together a supremacy deck but i think i seem to remember that i tried to do that on the old tabletop days when you know, the fast riders first came out and it's a it's a thankless task um, upgrade wise they've got some tasty upgrades and some decent ploys they're very thematic uh, the bird in particular on samson when he's inspired is probably the highlight i'm looking forward to seeing how that actually plays on the um on the do on the on, on the screen does it, what sort of noise does that bird make looking forward to seeing that so that's it uh if you've got any questions do pop them in the comments below so i so say i was hoping to get a game in i haven't had time um, i'll try and do that as soon as i possibly can uh, and i'll stream that um once some one shape one way shape or form and uh, yeah let us know let us know what you think of the fast riders which which warband were you looking for uh, to come out next um i'm gonna guess you're gonna say scripture of the reavers but we'll see there's quite a few diehard chosen axes fans out there personally i'm looking forward to the chosen axes coming out although they're a bit maybe a bit too similar to all the existing ones so a bit of speed would be good to see um yeah let me know what you think and if you're enjoying your warhammer underworld online and do check out our beast grave reports and do uh, hit the subscribe button and the likes and all that kind of jazz uh, we very much appreciate it we appreciate it so until then and uh, next time whenever we see you uh, see you soon bye